today is the first day of autumn and in five and a half days let me count again let's see one two three four five yeah five and a half days at sunset on the 27th starts the day of atonement Yom Kippur Yom means day now I'm thinking that this pertains to all three of the Abrahamic Semitic religions. We know that Moses gave the hundreds of commandments, starting with the first ten. And we know that um, Yeshua, I'm calling him Yeshua instead of Jesus because there's no, there's no modern day modern J in Hebrew. The modern J was invented in the 15th century, but there is an ancient J, and the French people pronounce it properly, Je. Okay, so we know that Yeshua, of Na the rabbi from Nazareth, that he observed Yom Kippur. He observed all the 600 plus commandments. So, in my mind, it's not only the descendants of Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, there I go, Jacob, and um, the people of Moses, it, it's also the rabbi from Nazareth. And, do you know that the Quran says that it was sent for one reason only? And that reason is to confirm the earlier books and what it means by books and it does say this it says the Torah of Moses and it says the gospel how do you like that so you see why I'm saying that the three Abrahamic Semitic religions should could would be nice would be beautiful if they observed Yom Kippur now, what, what the word says is you should um, afflict yourself on this day. You know, it's to consider all the mistakes you've made in the past year, make ret retribution, say you're sorry to whoever, um, and think how you could improve yourself, and this is a good thing. Now, if you were eating all day, you would be distracted and you wouldn't have a lot of energy and you want most of that circulation up here. You don't want to be digesting, which takes a lot of uh, time and energy. Now, um, I think most uh, Jews, Yehudis, um, they don't have anything to drink either. It's not just food. I have low blood pressure, and if I did that, I'd be on the floor. And when I wake up on the floor, I would not know how long I've been on the floor, because my blood pressure drops, so I have water. I also usually make some kind of vegetable broth, you know, and I, I strain it, make sure it's just the broth, in case I start feeling bad. You also don't do any work on Yom Kippur. Your energy is totally for spiritual matters, thinking, praying, you know, reading the word, nothing physical, nothing. I put a sign on my door, and I put the date there, 9-28-2020, no visitors, Yom Kippur. I don't open the curtains, nothing. So think about it. Um, this is a special month, you know, this is the month that after Yom Kippur, we have the Harvest Festival outside, which is very wonderful because you're spending a lot of time out there, and you're just, just getting in touch with, with nature more so than usual, and um, it's a really nice experience. And uh, the, these three Abrahamic religions, they really, they they really should be together, um, you know, in in purpose, 
um, and caring for one another because, I mean, it's just the same thing. It's just silly the way it is now, you know, being separated intellectually, emotionally, socially. It's, um, you know, I've attended mosques, I've attended churches, I've attended synagogues. Um, what's the problem? Why don't you visit these places? What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Might make some friends. You know, I was in a mosque once in central Florida, and uh, the imam, meaning the leader of prayer, was giving a khutbah, that means sermon, and he said something I always remember. He said, you all should multiply yourselves by zero. He went on to explain that this means humility, thinking of others and thinking of things more important than yourself. Now, what quotes do I have from churches? And what quotes do I have from synagogue? I'll save the synagogue one for last, because that was, wow. So I was attending a, a Pentecostal church uh, down in South Florida. Um, uh, me and my sons were the only uh, non-African Americans there. What it was was um, I was working in a clinic, and uh, the nurse that worked with me in immunization she invited me to church. So I just went to be polite, you know. And the music was so good there, and the food was good, and they were so caring and loving, and the preaching was fantastic. I just stayed. I stayed for eight years. Anyway, I, I won't quote. <laughs> I won't quote that uh, pastor because um, he said some very strong things. And um, okay, we'll go on to what I learned at the synagogue now. I can't remember many things I learned there, but this one thing, this one thing was so important. I, I, I'm glad I was there, and, and I was there for quite a while. And um, he was, uh, he was uh, speaking on, uh, on the weekly part of the, the scripture, the Torah that they go through. Um, every month until they, you know, touch something on each of the books each year. So he mentioned that the Almighty is humble. And I was so surprised he said that. So when he finished, you know, later on the people were talking, you know, visiting with each other, eating, whatever. And I asked him, how is the Almighty humble? And he said, because he does not use all his power. All his power that he could use. Can you imagine? So that's a beautiful thing. And when I hear about people trying to force other people to do things, uh, or the government trying to force you to do things, I always think the same thing. If the Almighty doesn't even interfere with our free will, then why should anyone else? And anyone else who's interfering with your free will, isn't that a kind of um, blasphemy? Because you're trying to be, they're trying to be um, more important than the Almighty who does not interfere with our free will? Think about that. Don't say yes all the time. In fact, don't say anything. Somebody asks you for something, say, I'll need a day or two to think about it. What else? Well, just a random thought. Well, not so random. Every day, or every night when I'm reading the news, the news, I'm hearing, you know, somebody got in somebody's window and stole their child, and somebody did this and somebody did that in, in their home and they broke into their home and attacked them. I always think the same thing. I say to myself, this never would have happened if they had a dog. Right? Okay. That's it for now.